A famous sculptor once said, art does not solve problems, but makes us aware of their existence. Art education, on the other hand, does solve problems. Years of research show that art is closely linked to almost everything that we say we want for our children and demand from our schools. Academic achievement, social and emotional development, civic engagement, and equitable opportunities. Hello, I'm Superintendent Jerry Hill. And I'm Alicia Fly, Deputy Superintendent for Teaching and Learning. Today we're joined by Justin Brown, art teacher at Scotch Elementary, and Trish Takata, art teacher at both Gretchko Elementary and Roosevelt Elementary. Alicia, we in the West Bloomfield School District have demonstrated the value that we have in art by ensuring that it be included when we initiated our STEAM education, adding it to science, technology, engineering, and math, or STEM. That's right, Dr. Hill. Involvement in the arts is associated with gains in math, reading, cognitive thinking, critical thinking, and verbal skills. Arts learning can improve uh, motivation, concentration, confidence, and teamwork. Justin, uh, I know that when you were in school, I understand that you majored in both the visual arts and in biology. Sure. Uh, tell us why you believe it is important to integrate the arts into the STEAM program, particularly at such a young age as elementary. Well, I think the, for me to talk about STEAM is I have to kind of rewind a little bit and go back to when I was in school. When I was in school, um, integration was kind of a whisper word. And it was so whispered that even in my science book, I believe at the bottom right corner, everyone child would say, make connection, and it'd be math. And that was it, you know, so it was never spoke of or kind of heard of again. So these students start going, kind of going into the workforce and uh, they're saying, well, wait a minute, you know, these students are having a hard time kind of answering the higher level questions, you know, there's no communication, collaboration, so in comes STEM, which has been awesome. You know, science, technology, engineering, math, as you guys um, have already previously stated. But again, now if we fast forward to today, then we're talking about STEAM, and all of a sudden we're saying, well, wait, now with today's uh, society, you know, we need more students who are involved in technology and design. And so in kind of came the arts, which has really been awesome because it's opened up a whole new kind of door for skill levels. Uh, for students who might have been kind of lost in the educational process or kind of been at a standstill. Uh, it's really give them an opportunity to kind of give their input. Uh, I also talk with students at such a young age because I think it's very important that not only um, to kind of have it as a second nature, this is something that we already do. It's not really a new process. You know, the idea and using it in the schools is a new process, but the, the, whole, the whole thought process that goes along with it isn't. And I'll kind of give you an example. So if I have a student who I say, hey, I need you to, you know, hit this nail and I need you to nail into this piece of wood. You know, he's not going to go grab a screwdriver out of the back because his brain's already kind of, you know, filtered out what he knows, you know, what angle he needs to hit, what he needs to, uh, to use to kind of accomplish that goal. So uh, I think the STEAM process, what it's doing is how can we do this uh, more efficiently? Mm -hmm. You know, can we get a better tool? You know, are we using all the tools to our advantage? Are we using the right angles? Are we hitting it hard enough? I think that's kind of what the whole STEAM process is doing for our students at such a young age. So kind of getting them involved so early has really been awesome. And sounds like it's been an opportunity to also engage more students um, with the integration of various subjects. Absolutely. And, and, you know, being an art teacher, I was a student who, you know, I was very good on in the science end. I was very good in the, in the visual art end. But I couldn't really find my place with mathematics. Love math wasn't my topic, you know. We spent a lot of long nights at the table, but it's just been giving us a, a new way to kind of show our skills and kind of bring these skills to the table. And Mary, I know that in your classroom, you teach problem solving at the same time that you are inspiring creativity in students. How do you believe an art education enriches a student's elementary education experience? Well, I, I get really excited when I talk about the creativity part, but I, it, Starting with the skills is, of course, very important. Fine motor, hand-eye coordination, and building on those skills, they can use these skills back in the classroom, whatever they're studying. But the part that um, they can use as they go on, they get very interested in using these skills for other things. Um, the creativity that's involved is, I love when children can make their own decisions and making their own decisions they can solve different kinds of problems for instance how do I make this better 
how if how can I fix this and make a happy accident to go with it. But they go hand in hand. And when we do this, we bring it back to the classroom. We work with the classroom in such things as the kids studied habitats in the zoo, and we had a landscape architect come in and teach the kids how to do mapping of zoos. Not just the animals, but what else does that incorporate? Where do people park? Where's their playground? And the kids came up with stuff like um, uh, a zoo hospital. They needed an adoption area. All these things that they were so creative about. And we did make zoo habitats recently, and they are going to the zoo. So it comes hand in hand with classroom learning. Yeah, and it, it sounds like it's um, provided an opportunity to make learning more relevant for yes. students. Yes, real life learning yeah. and real life and what they're doing right now, yeah. So, so Justin, what's the difference between arts integration and arts as it's called in, in the STEAM uh, way of approach to project-based learning? Well, Dr. Hill, I think we have to be very careful. We want to be sure that we're authentic when we're using the arts and STEAM. Uh, and I say that because there's, there's really three ways you can kind of look at the arts in school. You have arts when they enhance a curriculum, you have integrated arts, and then you have STEAM. Uh, if I can give you a couple quick examples. Uh, I think when, when you're using it as an enhancement, uh, say we might have some students, we're talking about a holiday, you know, and, and we, we want to send the students home with, you know, some type of nice projects. They do something simple that kind of goes along with it. With it. That's more of an enhancement. Um, integration, if I can give an example, would be like in science per se. So maybe the student in science class is um, studying the cell in different parts of the cell, and now they're going and they're doing a drawing of the cell, okay? So they're labeling different parts, and they're, and they're integrating the two, but they're still separate, right? They're not really answering a question or a problem per se. Um, where STEAM, okay, the STEAM is where we're actually using the skills that we're deriving from art and visual arts to answer a higher learning based question. And what I mean by that is, for example, maybe we have a design team, like at Roosevelt, uh, Sunberg Ferrar came in and had a designer who came in and did an awesome job talking with the students about how they collaborate as teams, how they communicate, and they brought the, a problem to the students. And they said, you know, how can we fix this problem? They had to use different, you know, they had to use their mathematical brain to kind of come up with the right size and shape. Maybe the toothbrush wasn't tall enough, it wasn't standing up. And then they were using that skill to help design it. So it's more of an integration to, to kind of answer the, the whole question. And Mary, how do you believe that visual arts um, integrate with the other fields um, in the STEAM initiative when we talk about science, technology, engineering, um, arts, and mathematics? Well, they integrate in a way that it, they deepen the learning that the children are doing. So it's not just uh, we're making a flower, we're making a painting. It's kind of like we're, what Justin said, we're studying an artist that perhaps makes, integrates engineering and STEAM, and we're studying how those things function, whether it's cars, whether it's zoos, whether it's landscapes also, and then we go ahead and make projects about it with different materials. And using those materials really enhance their skills and really develops their ability to problem solve and come up with new solutions. So I think that that whole STEAM aspect of it is very relevant. A good example of integration might be a project that we recently saw in your classroom that was based on some unusual artwork by a current uh, artist named Natalie Meebach. Um, I understand that she translates weather data into complex sculptures and musical scores. Tell us about how, tell us about that and how your students responded to her concept or her methodology for art. Well, they, she's, she uh, does things about many, um, her, her art is about many different aspects of the weather and climate change ecosystems, mm -hmm. how they relate. And she makes these baskets of coordinates of colors and beads, and they're enormous. And they come all from her direct scientific research. And what she's asking is, well, there's graphs and there's data, but is there other way to present data and change about um, climate? And what the kids came, they were predicting weather as well as keeping track of the weather. What degree it was? Is it warm or cold? What do we think spring's gonna be like? The winter was very warm. 
and then they were making their own colors with the beads and with the pipe cleaners. So they were looking at their data, beginning to make baskets, and then they coordinated those baskets. And everyone did one, and then each child wrote up, these are my predictions, and this is what really happened. So they were very involved with it, and we had the parents starting the projects in the rooms, then they brought them to art, and then they did their um, conclusions really in the classroom. Yeah, I, and I think similar to what Justin was saying, it's, it's so um, great that when we talk about 21st century learning, that learning has certainly evolved from that little isolated box in the corner mm -hmm, of the right. instructional man manual that said connector and what you're describing. Right. It's interactive, it's vibrant and engaging all the time in your mm -hmm. classrooms. Mm -hmm. And so certainly when we think about um, um, the arts, um, the there's a public sense that the arts were lovely but not essential. And as we stated at the beginning of the show, and we see in our classrooms, art certainly enhances academic achievement as well as social and emotional development. Um, Justin, can you just share with us, how do you believe we can make a connection with the career readiness um, in visual arts um, at the elementary level? Because certainly, um, when you talk about 21st century learning, there's lots of discussion about college and career readiness. Right. right. Well, absolutely, and I think especially at that level, <clears throat> it's very important to let the students understand that you know visual arts is a universal language. You know, whether it's in marketing or or whatever business, um, you know, when you walk into a store, you know, the first thing you notice is you know the brightest, maybe the coolest design pair of shoes or the shirt that's in the shelf in front of you. And I think making that connection with the students and saying you know and, and talking to them, why is that? You know, why why are businesses marketing that way? Um, you know, why is it important for us to kind of you know, kind of turn and change our, our mindset to kind of go in that same direction. So, so there's a substantial uh, amount of evidence that, that children, kids learn um, when they're immersed in the arts, they learn better, they do better in other academic subjects. Uh, do you see any evidence of that in your work with, with students in the classroom and how students react to the projects they work in and does, does, uh, is there a different way of thinking going on in art or how does it enhance my acad one's academic abilities? Well, I do, um, the children do their own projects and then they do a lot of collaboration too. We make large scale murals based on books. We work with art, music, and gym. For instance, um, we just made these large-scale color wheels where they were based on fruits and vegetables. And in gym, they learned about nutrition and did relay games where they would do junk food or whether this is a fruit or a vegetable. Then we went, did the color wheels, mixed the colors, and they did the Hungry Caterpillar in music. So not only do we do the classroom learning, but we all are doing it in the arts and gym. We're surrounding ourselves with all these things that the kids are playing with and learning from. So it's worked out, it's just working out beautifully. And Justin, I've heard it said before that students flourish when creativity drives learning. And we saw evidence of that in your fourth grade classroom as students were not only learning perspective and color um, and relationships, but studying the work of masters um, in the area. <clears throat> yeah, I think that's how we keep it authentic for the students. Mm -hmm. You know, give them opportunity to kind of learn and create with their own ideas and thoughts, and then we kind of connect it with the, with the culture and our community. So we've had opportunities where we're able to take the students down to the DIA. They can kind of, you know, talk about in the classroom, well, what are we doing here? You know, what have, what have the masters done in the past? And I believe one of the pictures you guys saw was the Mogliani that they had hanging on the wall, which they do a really nice job and love every year. But then they had a chance to actually go to the DIA, which is a you know community, or excuse me, a community, um, you know, member, and they were able to actually see and have a hands-on experience with these. So it kind of makes them come back and kind of drives their creativity and being individuals. We'd like to thank our guests, uh, and we're going to be coming right back to talk to our teachers at West Bloomfield High School.
We're back with our high school teachers, Mimi Hoffman and Molly Marshall. Welcome. Uh, Molly, you've been teaching a variety of classes in the area of art for the past 18 years at West Bloomfield High School, uh, including art foundations, drawing, theater arts, and 3D foundations. So tell us about how you see students benefiting from their engaging in those art classes. So I see students benefiting and engaging in arts because they engage in the creative process. Um, you see them from start to finish um, create something. And I think through creating something we all feel a joy. Um, particularly at the high school level, I see it building their self-esteem. There are a lot of students who come in and don't feel very confident about their artwork. Um, and by the end of the semester, they're very confident or they're more confident. And um, that's a beautiful thing to see when students really engage and feel that joy in creating something. And I think all of us like to create things. Um, deep down, I think we all want to create something. And so being a part of um, seeing that with kids and seeing them create something and the joy there is just amazing. And it chills you light up just talking oh, about yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. and, and Mimi, you have a wealth of experience as well and not only um, as a teacher but as a jeweler yourself and you're currently teaching ceramics, um, jewelry and three-dimensional art foundations. Have you noticed a change in students' art experiences in the last 15 years that, um, that you've been teaching? So um, what I notice is that um, students are more afraid. They're, uh, they're, they want to be right. And when they come in, I think um, a lot of kids are afraid to take art because they don't want to be wrong and they feel like somebody else can do it better. But somebody else can always do it better. It doesn't matter what level we're at. So, um, so I see that when they come in and they're scared, um, just acknowledging that we, are, we all feel that way and then watching them grow. But I notice that kids really have a lot of pressure to feel right and to be, um, yeah, to, just to be perfect. And, yeah. and then when, they, when we work with them mm -hmm. and teach them that that's not what it's about mm -hmm. and they will get better as long as they work. And, and then when you see them light up and, and um, as they grow, that is, yeah. But, yeah. but um, as, definitely as I think we see kids coming more afraid to do the wrong thing. And, and again, you see them blossom as and they discover their own they, unique strengths. Exactly. Um, that they get excited about and that creativity, as you mentioned, yeah. begins to blossom. And they, they come in thinking they can't do anything. And then they start creating and they're like, oh my, oh my gosh, I can. <laughs> like just seeing that is awesome. And yeah. I think it teaches them that it's okay to make mistakes and how to make mistakes and that mistakes are a part of the process. So in the... Mm -hmm they want to do everything right, they all of a sudden realize, oh my gosh, hey, it's okay to mis make mistakes, and sometimes they're beautiful. And I think that applies and to the real world. Right, right. Yeah. And sometimes those mistakes are what we actually learn from, like, oh, okay, I, it doesn't work when I do that, so then if I don't do that, but I try it this way, then it's gonna work. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's that whole critical thinking and experimentation piece that's really good for kids, yeah. yeah. Well, I always liked art because there was not a right answer. So <laughs> yes, that's so true. Yeah, yeah. So, so Molly, you sponsor the art club at West Bloomfield High School. Uh, tell us about what the students do in the club and w how many members and what kind of activities do you get involved in with those students? Um, we meet once a week, mm -hmm. so we meet four times a month, which is really awesome because mm -hmm. we're able to develop really good close relationships with each other. Um, we pick projects that we want to work on collaboratively and we work on them together. We go on field trips. We participate as a club in things like You Matter Week and the ACS Carnival. We did henna painting with the You Matter Week. We decorated a wall that was really, really fun for the students to decorate. I think there's a picture um, in this segment somewhere. Um, we have guest speakers come in. Next year we have a couple of surprises. We would like to work on the garden and we would like to have a teacher-student studio day. Mm -hmm. So we do all kinds of really fun stuff. And it's not just for people who are really good at art. It's for people who just might want to dabble or see what it's about. So we like to have anybody come and join us. 
Cool. Yeah, and we, you know, when we're in the high school, it's always so exciting to see not only just the work displayed, but just the students' leadership and excitement around what they've created. Yeah. Do you guys want to come to art club next year? Yeah, <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Good. We'll see you there. <laughs> and, and Mimi, can you share with us just some of the opportunities that students have uh, once they are, are involved in um, various um, art classes at the high school? So once they get involved in um, some of those art classes, you, you do see that personal growth and that confidence that's built. and. Um, and that just that new opening up of like a, a broader way of thinking um, and so one thing I know in my classes they learn a lot with metals and and um, ceramics materials um, is that they have to become patient with the materials and with themselves and I find that at the end of the year when they reflect that is the biggest thing kids mention is that learning to be patient with themselves with the materials um, and I think that goes a long way in life. Yeah, so. Absolutely, that reflection is, is so important. Yeah. Um, and certainly our students have had great success um, in competitive events, um, as well as what they do routinely in the classrooms as well. Um, some of the events, the competitive events have included our regional scholastics competition. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us about some of the events throughout the art department, um, other events where students have certainly excelled? Um, there are opportunities for a lot of different art shows. Um, Scholastic is our big one. Um, that's at the College for Creative Studies, and that's a big deal, especially for seniors who enter, usually enter a whole portfolio of artwork. Um, so that is our big one. We have a lot of other events as well. We have a community house um, show that students do in Birmingham. We have the BBAC art show. You have a couple of jewelry shows. Right. Um, we are, we have a senior show, um, which is really, really a fun, fun event. Um, we are working on a high school art show for next year. We have a holiday art show. We also, um, we partner with um, CCS to come in. They come in and they'll do workshops with us. Um, so we can call and kind of set up a personalized workshop for whatever we want our kids to learn about and we can go there. Yeah. So we, there's a lot of different opportunities um, for that type of stuff. Good. Yeah. So when one thinks about the purposes of education, uh, there are several. Um, we're, we're preparing kids for jobs, uh, future jobs. We're preparing them to be uh, good citizens uh, in how to participate in a democratic society. Uh, we're preparing them to be human beings who can enjoy the deeper forms of beauty, and, and art is certainly one of uh, those areas. So let's talk about real-world applications first, and, mm -hmm. and what kind of jobs or careers can, do you see students going into who have an ability in art? Mm -hmm. So um, there are a lot of design possibilities. Um, there are architectural designs, there are industrial design. Um, everything that you see is designed. There's um, and there's floral design. Yeah, you know. um, des like jewelry design is one. There are um, designs for making purses, making shoes. All those are designed by someone. Everything we wear is designed by someone. Everything we look at, everything we touch. Um, cars are designed, right? So we need people that can model stuff. Um, cars, the car companies particularly, are looking for um, people because we are less dexterous because of the computers. Um, there are less people that can sculpt things and make things three-dimensionally. And so, like, I know the car companies are always, like, looking for good people who can take a piece of clay and form it into a car. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just have that vision or see some engineering design ideas and then create that form. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're just, it's broad and it's, out, like, of course, there's illustrators and animators and, oh my gosh, there are so many fields that artists can go into nowadays. It's, mm -hmm. it's just incredible. And like we really are living in a visual world, you know? I mean, even on our phones, um, there's apps, pictures mm -hmm. for things. Mm -hmm. So there's always somebody, somebody that designs things, people who design the chairs and, yeah, right. there's artists behind everything that we do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and yeah. I know, Mimi, you've, you've had the opportunity to meet directly with some of the businesses and hear mm -hmm. about some of the needs that, that you've mentioned. Right, right. 
And in addition to the 2D and 3D art that um, the two of you teach, we have another phenomenal teacher mm -hmm. um, that's a part of your team as well at West Bloomfield High School, Allison Davis, um, who teaches studio art um, for t and photography. And we're adding some additional photography classes for next school year um, due to student interest level. And that's certainly um, another career path, you know, mm -hmm. that students take as well. So right. any other areas that you, um, it, that students um, can, that you see students pursuing as a result of their experience with art classes? Um, we have a student who was very active in the art department, just excelled in the art department. Um, and he went on to architecture school and is excelling there. And one of the things that his teachers told him there before, well, before he got there, he went and did some research and they said, take as much drawing as possible mm. because we want you to be able to draw on the spot and we want you to be able to see things that way and think that way. So um, even things like architecture where they have their own program, there's some art in there mm -hmm. that um, is really helpful. You know, if you go into a meeting with an architect and you say, well, I don't like how this looks. Um, can you redraw the chair? And the architect's like, no, I can't draw that. <laughs> you think, <laughs> no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I want a new architect. Right? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> so it's the basis of so much. Yeah. yeah. Great so STEAM is, a, STEAM is a relatively new uh, approach that we're using at the high school. And one of our students, uh, Jenna, Jenna Belling, just received the first Fine Arts STEAM endorsement. And, and her work was recently featured at the Oakland School's Fine Arts Showcase. Mm -hmm. um, can you explain to us what the, what the showcase was and, and what it was meant to do and what kind of, uh, what kind of art was displayed there? Um, there was both 3D art as well as 2D, 2D so a lot of drawing. Um, there were some ceramics, there was some sculpture, but it was all levels. It was from K to 12, which was really kind of beautiful to see um, the whole, pro the whole um, gamut. Growth process. Yeah, yeah, and the growth process, yeah, and the whole spectrum of artists. Um, there were some really cool um, paper moccasins that some of the elementary school students had designed. And it was up for the whole month of May. So anybody who went into Oakland schools could see the artwork. And the students who went into the awards night were just thrilled that their artwork was on display in such a beautiful spot. So it was, we were really excited about that. Yeah. This it, was our first year at the high school of being involved in that. And um, it was a beautiful show. So yeah, we're looking forward to doing that again. Oh, excellent. Yeah. And we had several uh, elementary groups and high school group uh, performing arts uh, yeah. were, were there as well and, and that's another aspect of the arts at, at our school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For sure. Mm -hmm. And certainly as, as many teachers know, um, STEAM education isn't just the course content. Um, it's the process of being scientists and mathematicians, engineers, artists, and also um, technicians when you t in terms of technology, um, as well as entrepreneurs, you know, mm -hmm. again, tapping into the creativity and ingenuity of students. Art projects in our classrooms integrate all four of the STEM uh, subjects um, while also um, creating objects of beauty, as mm -hmm. I've heard um, both, of, both of you speak to. So Mimi, can you describe how, how you integrate um, those um, diverse subjects um, in your classroom? Yeah, certainly. The, um, in, in both um, ceramics and jewelry, there, there are always plans to be made, um, things to be measured. Um, we're using chemicals in both classes. So, um, for instance, in the jewelry class, we do an etching with salt water using a battery. So it's an electro, electro, electro electric process where we, <laughs> I don't know the technical term, um, <laughs> where we use the positive and negative voltage and actually um, etch away some metal to create the design in their, in their uh, materials. Um, and with ceramics, we're using all the um, glazes, which are different chemicals. So um, there's, there's all that understanding of how those materials work, which mm -hmm. are um, you know, just part in part science. Um, so, uh, and truly in jewelry, we, we do so much um, engineering type designs. I mean, it's on, certainly on the lighter engineering side, but, but they do need to calculate things out and measure and figure out, you know, how much metal they need and what it's going to do and 
um, you know, how that's going to be manipulated. So, yeah, and, and just both listening to the examples that both of you have shared, uh, again, you've talked about, you know, the utilization of science and mathematics and certainly technology mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. that you um, see regularly with your students, it sounds like. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. so, so that integration of multiple subject areas, and you both referred to it a lot, uh, occurs regularly uh, throughout the school, but it sounds like particularly in, in a lot of the art classes. Oh, yeah. um, and what kind of uh, real world problem solving do you see in your classrooms or do you think that being having an, a skill or an awareness of art can help students solve when they are solving real world problems? Um, yes, I definitely. I mean, I think that art addresses a lot of real world problems. I think it addresses first and foremost critical thinking. Mm -hmm. I think we need that on a daily basis to solve problems. Um, and I see that as one of the biggest benefits of art is that we are teaching them problem solving. Um, almost on a daily basis, they're given something where they just don't know how to solve it and they're a little confused and they're a little, you know, stumped. How do I do this? And then, you know, through a dialogue, they figure it out on their own. But we do, I mean, I was just in drawing today, I was teaching them how to enlarge using a grid. And that's very, that's very mathematical. Mm -hmm. um, so they're learning a lot of things about math, um, a lot of things about technology. Um, engineering, definitely. Engineering, it feels like engineering and art go hand in hand, doesn't right, it? Right, that whole yeah. calculating creating. things out yeah. and creating, yeah, yeah for sure. And, and certainly in West Bloomfield, we believe that a curriculum rich in arts integrated activity is linked to um, across the board achievement and retention um, certainly increases with our students. Yeah. 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 And these achievements have been shown to benefit our students even after they leave the classroom. Uh, increased retention is due to the fact that each time a student uses information in a new and different way, they, it, be, it comes embedded within them and that information is slightly more useful and they can draw upon it for future problem solving. Mm -hmm. And, and we appreciate uh, both, both Mimi and Molly uh, being guests with us this afternoon. And we thank, thank you, you for joining us today as we have mm -hmm. taken a closer look at the arts in the West Bloomfield School District.